Good afternoon, everyone. I'll be presenting a paper on a title under the title of Histopathological and Radiological Correlation of Optic Nerve Involvement in a Case of Retinoblastoma. Previously published studies have rightly highlighted optic nerve invasion as one of the most important prognostic factor in a case of retinoblastoma. So, uh, NVI and secondary glaucoma are the clinical pred uh, predictors for optic nerve invasion. MRI still remains the most widely used modality for optic nerve evaluation in preoperative cases. But does this MRI reliably predict optic nerve infiltration in all the cases all the time? To answer the same question, this study was designed. In a, in a retrospective case series of 93 primary enucleated cases of retinoblastoma, after clinical in evaluation, optic nerve invasion was studied on MRI T1 post contrast scans, which was then compared with the results of histopathology. For this, we had expert radiologists and pathologists trained specifically for ophthalmology cases in our team to analyze all cases to nilate the uh, subjective bias. Let's go through some of the clinical case scenarios. A four-year male child presented with a right eye leukocoria with focal NVI, secondary glaucoma. So he was diagnosed with right eye group E retinoblastoma with clinical high risk factors. On MRI, there was no evidence of optic nerve extension. But to our surprise, there was a histopathology revealed 5 mm of retrolaminar optic nerve extension. So here we had ONE on HP, but no ONE on MRI. Similarly, a second case presented with right eye leukocoria, diffuse ectopion uvia, and NVI. So a case of right eye group ERB with clinical high risk factors. Here, MRI showed 3 mm of retrolaminar optic nerve extension. But in this case, to our surprise, there was no optic nerve invasion. So MRI showed ONE, but on HP, there was no ONE. In a third case, it was a three-year-old male child with left eye leukocoria, group E retinoblastoma. MRI showed 7 mm of retrolaminar optic nerve extension. And histopathology, to our present surprise, it also showed the exactly same 7 mm of optic nerve extension. So ONE on both MRI as well as HPE. In a fourth case, there was a left eye leukocoria with diffuse ectopion uvia and raised IOP. So it was a case of left eye group E retinoblastoma with a clinical high risk factors. On MRI, there was no optic nerve invasion. And HP also suggested the same, that there was no ONE. So no ONE on both MRI and HP. So we went through all possible case scenarios of ONE. Going on to the results, out of 93, only 29 cases had both ONE on HP and MRI. Out of all cases with ONE on MRI, only 59% showed it on HP. And out of all the cases of ONE on HP, only 62% had it on MRI. On MRI, optic nerve head involvement was seen in 21 cases, retrolaminar optic nerve extension in 28 cases. On HP, optic nerve head involvement in 28 cases and retrolaminar optic nerve extension in 19 cases. So MRI had 62% of sensitivity, 57% of specificity, 59% of positive predictive value, and 59% of negative predictive value in detecting optic nerve extension. Role of MRI is to triage basically the cases of retinoblastoma, either towards neoadjuvant chemotherapy or primary enucleation. It also alerts the surgeon for possible surgical safe margins and taking long optic nerve stump. It also alerts the pathologist for a possible skip lesions and warrants a need for bread loafing. On the other hand, role of HPE stands for triaging the cases with HRF towards adjuvant treatment. As previously published, uh, as it is a, a previously uh, uh, published data, it has been uh, emphasized uh, that adjuvant therapy can significantly reduce the risk of metastasis. Previously done, similar studies concluded with limitations of MRI in detecting the ONE, but to our knowledge, this is by far the largest study in terms of sample size 
which showed more, modest sensitivity and predictive value for MRI in a case of ONE. So to conclude, while the role of MRI in RB is uh, invaluable, its utility in predicting ONE is modest. Thank you.